Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Dima Flood here and welcome back to another video. Today we're returning to Betweenlands to cover herb lore, which is how you create infusions, which are the Betweenland equivalent of potions, and farming in the Betweenlands dimension. Now it has been a little while since I've done a Betweenlands video, so I will link the Betweenlands playlist down in the description below, as well as in the top right so you can catch up on any Betweenlands videos you may have missed. If you missed the last video, link with that to be down in the description below. I highly recommend checking that out if you haven't already, as it is a very cool magic mod. Also, I know nobody likes to hear this, which is why I stopped mentioning it. However, the subscriber rates have been going down to below 90% not subscribed. But since I had stopped mentioning it, they have gone back up to 93.4% of you guys are not subscribed. So please, if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's free and it helps me out a bunch. Also make sure you turn those notifications on so you don't miss any future uploads. Now let's get right into the video. So as I mentioned, herb lore is how you create infusions or the Betweenlands equivalents of potions. To get started, you need a couple things. First you need an herb lore book, which is crafted like this. It needs to be in your inventory for gecko testing and it also has a list of aspects, ground items, and infusions with descriptions. You also need a sickle which is crafted with a weed wood stick, reed rope, and valonite shards and you'll use this item to harvest plants. And then you need a net which is crafted with weed wood sticks and reed rope and is used to capture geckos for testing. And then you need some dentrothis vials which are crafted with dentrothis and solid rubber and these store infusions and aspect vials. You also need these blocks, a mortar which is crafted as so and when a equipped with a pestle is used to grind items, and then a gecko cage which is crafted like this and it stores the geckos used for testing. So first step, use the sickle to collect plants. Then you use your net to collect geckos which spawn in swamp lands, coarse islands, and patchy islands. Then you use your mortar to grind up the plants. Then you put the gecko in the cage. Right click the gecko with any ground item. The gecko will react depending upon the aspect emitting particles or changing appearance while displaying a message stating the aspect on the item that has been discovered. It will also display if there are any more aspects left to be found. From then on, if an herbalar book is in your inventory, the aspect can be viewed from the item used if you shift while hovering over it, and a page will be made in the book. An additional message will display if there are more aspects to be discovered or if all have been discovered already. The gecko will need time to recover before being tested again and can die after being tested on too many times. They can be healed with the sap spit you get from small spirit tree faces. The next stage of herbalar involves some blocks. First is the infuser, which is crafted like this, and it must be lit with a fire from underneath and have water in it. From then on, any combination of ground items, aspect vials, and or spectrous fruit can be added. However, there's a limit to how many items can be added at once. You must stir regularly or the liquid will start evaporating, leaving behind a shallow breath. After stirring for the correct amount of time, the resulting infusion bucket can be obtained, which contains all the aspects of the combined ingredients. You often need to distill the bucket into aspect vials first to separate out the individual aspects. The next block is the alembic, which is crafted as so, and when you put a valid, properly infused infusion bucket into the alembic, it will become a proper, drinkable infusion collectible with dentrothis vials. Invalid or unfinished infusion buckets will result in a varying amount of aspect vials, which are singular aspects reusable in the infuser to get the correct ratios for an infusion. You can also farm your aspects. Now, farming is pretty different in the Betweenlands than in vanilla Minecraft. With setting up your farm, you'll first off want to put it under cover so it can't be destroyed by puddles during the heavy rain event. Additionally, in the future, mire and blood snails will seek out and eat crops so you want to protect against that. You'll need three things to farm. First off, any Betweenlands shovel. This shovel will be used to dig holes in dirt. You also need compost, which is placed in dug holes to fertilize the dirt and make it suitable for crops. It is created by putting compostable items in a compost bin, such as plants, plant items, and ground items. Then you close the bin and wait for a bit to turn it into compost, which you can then collect by opening the bin or right clicking. The third item is the seed you wish to plant. Crops are placed on composted dug swamp dirt, swamp grass, purified swamp dirt, or purified swamp grass. First, right click any of the blocks with a shovel to create a hole, then right click the dug block to place the compost in. You can then plant your seeds like normal. Every three harvests will remove the compost in the block, requiring it to be refilled. Crops can't be trampled and don't need to be near water, but the dirt can decay, preventing the crop from growing. The decayed ground can be temporarily cured by right clicking with a plant tonic, or you can just plant crops on purified swamp dirt to prevent it from decaying at all. Ground dry swamp reed acts like vanilla bone meal. Aspector seeds need to be below a rubber tree plank fence and cannot be sped up with ground dried swamp reed. You must apply an active sensor within range of the seeds with an aspect vial for the aspector seeds to grow. 
When the Spectre's plant finishes growing, it will drop a Spectre's fruit already imbued with the correct aspect. Aspects have certain effects on infusions besides just determining the infusion's actual effect. The potency and duration of the infusion are determined by the ratio of certain specific aspects within the infusion bucket used to make them. The more potent an infusion is, the less duration it has. Infusions have a minimum potency of 1 and a max of 5. The min-max duration depends on the type of infusion. The total number of aspects in the initial infusion bucket determine the number of resulting infusions that can be obtained. Infusions can be thrown by pressing shift and holding right click. The longer you hold it, the further it will travel. When it lands, it will act like a splash potion. It has a chance to leave behind 2-3 to three dentrothis shards and or a rubber ball. And that is going to cover this Between Lands Spotlight. If you enjoyed it, please remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more. Make sure you have those notifications on. If you would like to download this mod, link will be down in the description below, as well as a link to the playlist, wiki, and this mod's Discord. The link will also be in the description to the Science Pros and Truskelion, who made this outro music that you're hearing right now. That's all we have for you. Peace out, everybody.